Hey everyone, Frank from Old Town Coleman. Welcome to part two of how to rebuild a double mantle lantern. Part one, I tore apart this 1959 220AD and I'm ready to clean it and put it back together. I have some supplies that I'll be using today. I have a propane torch here that I'll be using on the fuel filler cap gasket. I'm going to be cleaning metal with some white vinegar, some navel jelly, and some carburetor cleaner. I'll be cleaning the fountain with some simple green and some rubbing compound and car wax. And I have a small bottle of Neats foot oil that I'll be using on the pump. I also have some rags. I have some 4 out steel wool and some assorted brushes. So that's what we'll be doing today. So hold on. I'll be right back and we'll get busy cleaning this thing up and putting it back together. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate what parts and how I want to clean them. Uh, the first thing I'm going to take out is the ventilator and the globe because those are both going to be cleaned in the kitchen sink, if I can get away with it. And they're going to be cleaned with warm water and a soft sponge. You don't want to use any abrasive or harsh cleaners on your ventilator. This one's uh, seen better days, but if I was to take a, a scrubber it would destroy the, or at least ruin the shine. You cannot paint one of these. This is porcelain enamel. Don't try to paint one. So just wash it in warm water and it will look nice. Now, I'm going to be working on a painted fount today. And to do a painted fount, you treat it just like a car. I'm going to clean it all off best I can with some household cleaner. I like Simple Green. And then I'm going to put some rubbing compound on it and then some car wax. So I'm going to clean the filler cap, the fount, and the, if I can find it, there it is, the screw for the filler cap. So we will be doing those separately. Now the rest I have in here is all metal parts. Sometimes you can get away with cleaning with vinegar. I love to clean with vinegar. Uh, it usually takes about a, a 45 minutes to an hour to get a piece of brass looking really nice. It will turn brass just a little bit purplish, pinkish, um, but it cleans real well. What it won't do sometimes is remove a lot of rust. So we have some rust with this lantern, and to get rid of rust, I like to use navel jelly. This stuff is really gooey, particularly on a double mantle frame. Um, especially this one's got quite a bit of rust, but to get up inside of these struts, uh, it's tough to have enough vinegar to soak one. So what I like to do is I'll just, uh, I'll coat it with the navel jelly and it works really well. And it works about half the time of vinegar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the parts that I want to clean with vinegar and I will get them started first and then we will coat the parts with uh, navel jelly. Brass parts I'm going to put into vinegar. There's only one brass part that I don't want to put in to a soak here. I'm even going to try to soak this. This is pretty rusty. Uh, this is the pump cylinder. There we got, it had some water in it at some time, but I think if we soak it for a while, it'll come out looking, looking okay. Um, the Tip cleaner stem is one part I do not want to soak in vinegar, and the reason I don't is there's still a packing inside of here. It's graphite packing, and if I soak it in vinegar, it's going to get damaged. So what I will do is I will add this to the bucket of parts that's going to be cleaned with the navel jelly. So the parts that I'm not going to clean in the vinegar is the direction disc and the valve wheel. Those won't go in there. Uh, I'm going to burn the gasket out of the fuel filler cap insert, so that's not going to go in there. I can put in 
The ball nut, uh, it looks like this one's nickel plated. I'm going to uh, use caution when I put nickel plate into vinegar because it will eat it. This is also nickel plated and it's very thin plate. You never want to use a metal brush on one of these. It'll rip the nickel right off and you'll end up with a brassy looking uh, pump cap. So all the rest of these parts I can put in the vinegar. Um, I just use a little Cool Whip bucket and I can put all of these parts in there. This is a little bit too big for it so I have more vinegar in this larger bucket and I will just set it in there. And take about 45 minutes and everything should come out looking much nicer and will be clean. So next I will start putting on some navel jelly. Again, the reason I like navel jelly is it is so goopy and it's real easy to get to stick to vertical and uh, odd shaped parts. So I'm going to, going to coat my frame rest. So on a 228E or 220E, uh, the painted lanterns, this part new did have a shine to it, but it was not a buff shine. It was not a brilliant shine. So what we want to try to do is get this on there to clean all this dirt and rust off of it. And then we will try to use a metal brush and some steel wool and see if we can get just a little bit of a shine back. We don't need a buff shine. Okay. I'm going to set that there. I'm going to take my tip cleaner stem and I'm going to apply this stuff. Um, you might want to use gloves if you have sensitive hands. Try not to get it on you too much. And the reason I don't use more of this stuff is because it is really messy. So on the frame I'm going to apply it to the entire bottom. A nice heavy coat down in there. This part here of the frame is where the frame rest sets against and it is usually has the same level of shine as does the frame rest. So we will we will try to give that a little bit of a shine once we get it cleaned up. Okay, that's about as goopy as I want to get. So I'm going to set this entire plate aside and we're going to let it set for about a half hour. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to burn out the fuel filler cap insert. Um, this is the way you'll find most of them. Uh, you can see that it's basically destroyed. That used to be a rubber gasket in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on this fire brick. I stole this from my wood burning stove when I replaced all the bricks and I use it to burn. You can just take it outside to a place that you won't light any fires with. What I'm going to do is get this really hot and get that gasket to just snake its way out of there so I can completely remove it and then we can replace it once it cools down. Okay, you don't have to worry about getting it too hot because it's brass and you're not going to get it too hot with a propane torch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this aside and let it cool down for 15-20 minutes so I can touch it and then get the rest of the gasket out. Okay, next comes the fount and the filler cap. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to shoot it with simple green. This fount's not in too bad a shape. It's got some scratches in it. I don't see any dents. I don't see any, any serious problems. I did smell a little bit of varnish when I took it apart, so I'm going to have to clean the inside too. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put a little bit of vinegar down there and I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes just to clean the, see if I can get some of the varnish off the bottom. And there's a little bit of rust in there also. I'm going to put some screws down in there, small screws. I'm going to shake it around to break the rust loose as best I can. 
and I'm going to rinse it out with uh, water. And once it come, starts coming out clear, then I'll rinse it out again with alcohol to get the water out of there and let it dry. And then the inside hopefully will be clean enough. Um, a lot of people have uh, asked me about uh, a product called PUR15, about sealing founts with it, sealing the rust in it. I don't recommend it for a couple of reasons. Um, if you pour PUR15 in the fount the way it is right now and you shake it around, um, if you can see inside of this fount, there is a small tube that goes up from the bottom of the pump cylinder. And that small tube, if you get PUR15 in there, you're going to plug it up and then your lantern's done. You're, you're not going to be able to get it back out. Um, the other way they do is they will not take their lantern apart and they will pour PUR15 down in there and just leave it set on the bottom. Well, your fuel and air tube is setting very close to the bottom, and if you pour too much in there, you're going to seal the bottom of your fuel and air tube, and you'll have to pull it all apart and, and fix that. So um, just try to get as much rust out of there as you can, and then once you have that done, just take care of your lantern, and you should be fine. Okay, so nice coat of this stuff. Now I'm going to take some auto standard automotive rubbing compound. I'm going to shoot a little bit in here to soften it up. And I'm going to take a dirty rag, and I'm just going to go on it like it was an old car from 1959. And just clean it. So the pump housing, uh, when I told you it can be really difficult to get the pump cap off of there because you can see the grime around there right now, make sure you get all of that off. Uh, we're going to take special sure the inside of our pump cap is clean and we want to make sure this area is clean also. Okay, the decal. The decal on this lantern is uh, it's pretty durable. If you're doing a single mantle, uh, especially the ones from the 70s, I guess even a double mantle, uh, look really careful at your decal. If it, uh, if it isn't a watertight decal, you can rub the lettering right off of it real easy with this stuff, so just be careful when you get around the decal, especially on the, the 70s and 80s lanterns. Okay, now I'm going to take a small brush, and I'm going to get work around here with the brush, and then I'm going to work around there. There's a little uh, groove in there I want to get clean with the brush, too. take some carburetor cleaner and I'm going to shoot it down inside of the pump and see if I can start removing some of the grime and, and, and this one's got some rust but oftentimes there's varnish down there, oil from the pump cup and uh, this will help clean it up a little bit. I can feel that it's kind of bumpy in there, the rust, it rusted in there. This lantern's a little over 60 years old, so you know, it's going to have a few dings and bruises. The, the sides of the wall in here are definitely rough, and that's going to harm our pumping ability, but we'll still be able to do it. But yeah, there's, uh, there's definitely some uh, rust into this pump. Unfortunately, when that happens sometimes, this, this tube I was showing you, if this thing gums up, it can take you months to clean that out. Um, if, if it does happen to you, if you're unable to push air even after you have your check valve out, if you're not able to push air into your pump, it usually means that this little tube is clogged with something. Um, it is possible to clean it. <laughs> it takes a long time, uh, literally months. It took me to do a couple of them, um, but it can be done. So now this is drying and I'm going to, with my simple green, and that will, uh, this dry stuff can be really a pain, pain in the neck to get off. So this makes it come off a lot easier. Okay, if you have a rust around this hole or on the inside, like I do just a little bit, you just take a, I have a rifle bore brush, an old one here. Just take it in there and knock that rust out inside and we'll wash it out here in a little bit. You use carburetor cleaner. 
Please don't use brake cleaner. Brake cleaner will destroy your paint really fast. Uh, carburetor cleaner does not, but it does clean parts well. Okay, now we're going to put a light coat of car wax on it to bring the shine back. Now that we've got all the oxidation off, see it looks a little bit better now. Okay, I'm just going to let that sit for a few minutes here and dry. Okay, it looks pretty dry now, so I'll just rub it off and... As with anything, you, the more time you're willing to rub on it and love on it, the better it's going to look. So, I'm doing this one for a video, so I'm not necessarily going to make it as pretty as I would if I was rebuilding it for myself or to sell. But it sure will look much better than it did. Well, she's green. Looks a lot better. So we can set it aside now. And we've probably been soaking for 15 or 20 minutes with this navel jelly. So why don't we, I'm going to set this over there because I still need to take it outside and clean the inside out. I think I'm ready to look at this stuff. See, without any work at all, it's... Uh, Coming out pretty clean. A few lines here and see if they come out. I don't know if I'm gonna have to do a, another another coat or not. So I have here is a brass brush. I'm not quite sure what those lines are. Hit it with some steel wall and see what it looks like. I don't know if I'm going to have to put it back in there or not. Now, I kind of cheated. Of course, you want to clean the inside of your frame rest out. I did not. Looks real nice. I'm not sure what this... Tiger stripe is stuff, is it? I can't tell if it's something that got on it or what. I know the rust came right off. I think I'm just going to I'm going to put some more navel jelly on it and let it set while I'm cleaning the frame, and we'll come back if this comes off great. If not, then it sure looks a lot better than it did. That's so about as shiny as you want to get it. Uh, you don't want a buff shine again because that's not the way a 220 came out. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit more navel jelly on it. Just where these stripes are. Let it sit a little longer and see if we can get them off. our tip cleaner. A little bit cleaner than it was. I'll just set her back in there. All right, now the frame. These frames are notoriously difficult to get clean. Um, when I this, did this professionally, I always cleaned them in a bead blast cabinet using glass bead. But uh, most people don't have that vice, so I'm going to clean it the old-fashioned way, by hand. And don't look too bad. Now I'm going to get the brush in here right off the bat. So 
I'm going to end up soaking this a little bit longer, this area right here. I've got some rust that I want to get rid of. Okay. few spots you can see the rust here at this lighting hole um, that is I'm going to put a second coat of navel jelly on it see if I can get that a little bit cleaner it's on both sides and on this side um, in the meantime I'm going to go inside and clean the globe in the ventilator make them look better and I'm going to clean the inside of the out. Uh, again, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to start with the rust that's in there, the little bit of rust. Just got some small screws like that. And I'm just going to drop them down inside. It's always easy to get them in, it's never easy to get them out. Then I'm going to just shake it up. Do that for a little while. Break any rust that I can free. And then I'll rinse it out and hopefully it'll be much cleaner. So I'm going to put some vinegar at the bottom to get rid of that smell. See if I can knock that varnish off. This will get rid of the rust for me. So I'll be right back. Okay, so while uh, the camera was off, I went out and I washed out my fount and got all the rust out of it. It looks really nice down inside of there. And I, I soaked it a little bit with vinegar at the bottom just to get the varnish out. Uh, I also cleaned the globe and the ventilator and it came out looking real nice. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do while I'm still waiting for the uh, frame to be done, I'm going to pick out the center of this. This is a fuel filler cap gasket that I just burned. It's cooled down now. So I'm doing, I'm just taking a sharp object here and I'm cleaning out all of the old gasket. I'm just going to take a brush to make sure that there's no dust down in there and I'm going to install a new gasket. You'll notice I used the word gasket and I did not use the word o-ring. There are some people selling o-rings on eBay and this is not the place for an o-ring. Finger there. And then I'll just set it on the fountain real quick to make sure it's nice and flat. And there's a new fuel full of gas, cap gasket. We'll try our frame rest again. Be aggressive with that. Okay. Better. We'll hit up some steel wool again. See how it looks. Now, you could go after this with some metal polish if you wanted to and rub on it for a while. It would make it even, even look a little bit better. Now, let's see if we got any of this rust off of this guy. Some people but I do want to hit the bale and the bottom of the frame where it's going to be resting up against the frame rest. I do want to hit that area with some steel wool.
whole time. And you can see it looks significantly better than when we started an old rusty, dirty frame. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the burner. Take it out. And again, you can see the pink on there. That's uh, from vinegar. That kind of goes away pretty much when you hit it with steel wool if you choose to. But get in here and clean this up. she is. There's our dirty old black burner. Soaked uh, 45 minutes, perhaps an hour. Haven't even hit it with steel wool yet, and I don't think I need to. Now, this is where your spiders live. They will crawl up through the bottom of the frame rest inside, and they will crawl up in here into your air intake tube and they will build a nest. And the longer they're in there, the harder the nest gets and the harder it's going to be to um, light your lantern. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take a little brush. I'm going to, I'm sure I cleaned it out really well when I um, soaked it. But I'm just making sure that I get everything out of it. And what I'm going to do here in a few minutes, I'm going to go get my air compressor hose and I will blow all this out. When you blow it out, blow from your burner, blow it back down that way, cover the hole for the generator and just blow it out the air intake tube. And especially on a, a lantern before you start cleaning it, if you do that, you're gonna see a lot of stuff come out of it. All right, let's start cleaning the little parts. I'm gonna start off. And again, if you hit if you hit that with steel wool, it kind of takes most of the pinkish away. But, I mean, you can see how it just cleans it right off. So here's our fuel and air tube. Be careful when you're cleaning it. Uh, it's soldered there and it's crimped up here. I believe it's crimped. And anyway, it's fragile. So just be gentle with it. So at the very bottom, that is your fuel intake port right there, that little tiny hole. So and up on top, there is your air intake port. Right there, that's that hole. So that's cleaned up a little bit. Let me get the, the spring and the metering rod out. Now this, I don't know if this lantern was ever taken apart before. It might have been because the valve was loose. Um, but I'm assuming that that spring has been compressed for 61 years. So to give it a little bit of push back, I'm just going to pull it a little bit, stretch it out, not much, just a little bit. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to go backwards with it with steel wool just to make sure that I have all of the varnish off of it. Our tolerances are pretty tight here so we don't want any dirt. Now I'm going to take some carburetor cleaner and I'm going to spray inside of our fuel and air tube. It's soaked in there so hopefully we got any varnish that was in there out, but I'm going to spray some carburetor cleaner down in there, and then I'm going to take my metering rod and put it in backwards from the bottom and just plunge it out, kind of push sideways on it to push it out best I can. And 
if I had my air compressor nozzle here, I would blow it out. But if you don't have an air compressor, you can Okay, now I'm going to put the spring on where it goes and put it in through the top where it's supposed to go. And what I want to make sure is that it will go up and down without binding. And it does. And you can see it's sticking out of the bottom. This metering rod is activated by the valve stem. When the valve is all the way closed, this is compressed down and it blocks any fuel from coming back up. As you open the valve up a little bit, this starts to rise and it changes the mixture of your fuel and your air. So that's what the tube does and that's why you don't want this to bind on you. This one looks real good. Okay, here's your valve stem. Now, on a valve stem, if someone gets too aggressive turning it off, around that conical end you're going to have a big groove. That's where it closes up against the valve body. So if you have a lantern that won't shut off, that's where you want to look usually. It's right there on the tip of the valve stem. This one looks good. And that's it. Okay, we have completely cleaned our lantern and it is now ready to go back, back together. together. But it's getting a little bit late, and I have some elk steak that I'd like to eat tonight, so I'm going to do that, and I will finish this video tomorrow when I get home from work. So we will see you then. Okay, I'm back. So I forgot to do this cleaning yesterday. It's just the valve wheel. I'm going to shoot that with some simple green, and I'm going to shoot the direction disc too. Now, the direction disc, um, you can easily ruin by being a little too aggressive with it. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna to have to let it sit for a few minutes. But the best way to clean it is just lightly put your fingertip on it and clean it off. And even when you dry it off with the rag, if you press on it too hard, all that lettering is gonna come right off. So together. the first thing that I'm going to put together is the pump because I want to soak the pump in Neat's foot oil uh, while I'm rebuilding the rest of the lantern. So, got the pump handle, here's the pump cup, and I'm putting the spring back on it. The backing plate is next, you can see it has a raised side that goes against the pump cup, so it goes up on this one, snug it down by hand, then the pump cup goes on it, and then the nut also has a raised side and that will go down, so it goes against the pump cup and that supports it. In the middle. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to make it look like an umbrella, just like that. And that is the shape I'm going to put it in the jar of Neat's foot oil in. And set it down like that. And I don't want, I mean, it's no big deal if it happens, but if possible, I'm going to try to keep the other parts of the uh, pump out of the Neat's foot oil because the that oil, if you don't get it all out of there, it can definitely um, make your check valve open up. So you want to keep as much oil as you can out of there. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is start putting the valve back together and the valve stem. Now, I told you when I took it apart that we'd have to discuss this one piece, um, and that is the uh, packing lock. Uh, if you can see, this side has a beveled side, or is beveled, while the other side is flat. So this piece goes on the valve stem first with the beveled edge forward. What it does is it will, when pushed against that C-clip retainer right there, it will lock it down. So that goes on first, followed by the new valve stem packing, or if you have the old one, you would put it on. And then that is followed by the spacer or the other uh, piece of the packing. So that's what it all looks like. And then you would thread it in like such, and push it down. 
and then just try to push your valve stem nut on. Try to get it going finger tight. We'll tighten that here in a minute. Once you have your valve stem in, then you can put in your fuel and air tube. And let me get that out. Again, we want to make sure that it, it goes up and down freely. So we're going to put it in there and make sure it goes in nice. And turn it in there. And a 5 sixteenths, I'm sorry, 3 eighths to snug this one. Okay, there's that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the proper amount of tension on the uh, new valve stem packing. I'm going to place it back in my bench vise. And I'm going to put the valve wheel on it. And you can see right now it's very loose. Uh, there's no resistance whatsoever. So I'm going to turn my valve stem nut a little bit here and now I feel a little bit of a drag. You can actually lock this thing down and where it won't move at all but you don't want to do that obviously but you do want to put some nice resistance on it and that's what I've got right now. Um, it's a little bit hard to turn and that means that the valve stem packing has been uh, is around the valve stem and it will not leak. So it's being compressed in there. So, next thing we do is put it in the fount. Uh, a quick discussion on thread sealer and thread locker. I have never used it. And I put hundreds of these things together. Um, but I've never used it. Some people swear by it. Coleman does use it. Uh, they use what they call a gas oil, a hard set. Uh, but if you want to, you can get some Loctite uh, 262 or 545 you can use, or the Gasoila. So I've never used it, I've never needed it, but you certainly can. Please do not use any sort of uh, tape on that. That will give you a false reading on how tight it is, and you can go by and you could damage the threads doing that. So what I need to do now is get my valve wheel to be positioned directly between my pump and my filler cap with the pump on the right. So I need to turn it 180 more degrees. And to do that, I'm just placing it upside down in the bench vise, just like I did when I took it out. So, around we go. So, that needs to go just a little bit further. That's pretty good. So there's our installed valve. What I, want to, what I want to do now is put it in a new check valve. Get that ready. And we will also work on the fuel filler cap. So if you decide, if you have pulled out your old check valve and you decide to use it, um, you'll see that this has a gasket on it. The old ones don't. The original ones do not have a gasket down there. And that does improve sealing down at the bottom of the fount. And if you go on my website, you can find the size for that O-ring. Uh, I found them at Ace Hardware. They are made of Viton, and they're, they're really nice. They're a little bit bigger than these, but they do seal well. So I'm just dropping this down in there, and I'll rock it around so she's setting nice and flat. And then I'm gonna put my screwdriver in there, and I'm just going to just snug it, and there she is. And I'm gonna put my air stem down inside of the check valve. Give that a turn, and she's ready to go. Now, I might as well do the fuel filler cap while I'm here. Uh, again, we got a brand new gasket in there, a flat gasket. Remember, it's not for an O-ring, it's for a flat gasket. And I'm just gonna set it on there. And I'm going to put the filler cap on loosely so it can thread properly inside of the insert. 
and then once I get it threaded, then I can tighten it down a little bit. Okay, you'll notice on the filler cap that there is a space between the bottom of the screw and the top of the cap. That's the way they're supposed to be. So I'm putting that on there now. Next we'll put the frame rest on and we're going to use the protector plate. Set it on there. That. And then I will put this set it like that. Okay, I got her in, a, in the lantern vise and I am ready to uh, install the frame and the tip cleaner and ultimately the, the burner will go down on top of that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just setting things up and getting it ready to go. Uh, here's my tip cleaner. When I cleaned it, I had to take this, the lock nut down. So now I'm just pushing it all the way up to the top of the valve or the tip cleaner. And I'm going to just set it in there and thread it in, get it going. What I need to do is when this lantern is properly aligned, the center of this strut is going to go right over the center of the valve stem, which will put this off at an angle to it. And then this, the tip cleaner stem, is going to come out and it has to be centered in there. So to align the tip cleaner, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the tip cleaner stem and I'm going to loosely thread it in there to see how close I am. Okay, so there it is. And if I look at the front of the lantern, I can see that it is a little bit too far. So I'm going to take my half inch wrench and set it down there and just, just to move it just a little bit. Uh, I think I can do it with this one, yeah. I just want to move it a little bit. Make sure I have this in there. Okay. So I'm trying to get this where the tip cleaner will be centered in that little tiny groove there. And then the lantern will be directly over that, which it appears that it is. And I'm also looking down to making sure that this hole in the tip cleaner is aligned up with the hole in the frame, because the next thing we're going to do is set this down in there. Okay, now I want to tighten the uh, frame nut down. So I am done with my protector plate here, and now I'm setting it down on the painted front, uh, fount, so I want to be real careful now. So I'm going to hold it down, and I'm going to, with my fingers, tighten this nut. Get it as tight as I can, Then I'm taking my mil-spec wrench. You can get out of a military lantern. They're a lifesaver. Okay, let me look at everything again. So you'll see that I'm trying to align uh, and make sure this hole is around the valve stem nut uh, evenly. And we still have this coming out of here evenly. And this is all lined up right here. And I have a nice lined up hole here, so we're still good. I'm going to give it a little bit more tightening. Feels a little bit sloppy still. Uh, I don't want to crush this down there, but I don't want to be able to just turn the frame real easy. That feels pretty good. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to reinstall the eccentric block. Now I'm going to hold this here. And actually, it's usually better if you use the old generator. If you just you take the 
the stem on it and you can hold the centric block and you can get it a little bit lower because you don't want to drop it. So I'm going to turn this. I'm going to turn it until it hits the eccentric block and then I'm going to allow it to get into that groove and you'll see it once it gets in there it will start going up and down okay I made it inside of the groove so now I'm going to finish tightening it down okay Remember we uh, just tightened the valve stem packing down and it had a little bit of resistance. You want to make sure you have the same thing here. It should not spin freely. You should have to force it a little bit. And that, that indicates that your valve or your tip cleaner stem packing in here is uh, properly seated. All you have to do is take the same 3 8 inch on that nut and tighten it down a little bit if it's not. Okay, next comes the uh, burner. Now some older lanterns have a two-piece air intake tube. The bottom piece is separate from the top piece. But the, that would be an older uh, 220B lantern. So what I'm doing now is this will line up perfectly. You can see the hole there you'll be able to see the hole in the air intake tube line up with it and that's where the set screw goes in and it feels like it's getting right about there now I think that's there so I'm going to take my set screw now this can be a little bit difficult because you need to make sure that this screw goes all the way in. When you are finished tightening it, there should be no space between the, the head of the screw and the tip cleaner assembly. You can see that it's, it's all the way in there. And that tells you that it is, uh, the set screw is all the way seated. Okay, so now we can put in a new generator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the gas tip in and get it in there. And then I'm going to lift this thing up until I can insert it into a little hole. And then I'm going to turn the gas tip or the tip cleaner down. Now it can't come free. So now I'm going to slowly lower it and see how it sits against the uh, the top of the tip cleaner there, that's what we want. If it uh, fights you a little bit, don't force it, just turn the tip cleaner because what the, the needle is coming out the tip and you don't want to bend it. So just tighten this down by hand and then take a 7 16 and give it. So I'm putting my valve wheel back on and I'm making sure that it is shut all the way off. Okay, there's that. Okay, we are trying to get all of the oil, all of the excess oil out of it. There's going to be some inside the shaft that you want to get it all out. Because again, it will drain down into the check valve and it makes it uh, where it will not seal. So, the way you do this is... You see that the air stem sticks out of the fount just a little bit, so you got to make sure you get it started, but then you put one edge of your pump cup down inside of the pump cylinder because you don't want to roll it. And you tuck it in all the way around until it just slides in, and then you take your pump cap and make sure you line the holes on it. Make sure the oil hole is above the uh, pump shaft upper side and now I'm going to take this uh, be careful when you put the pump clip on sometimes they get really tight and you have to use needle nose and you don't want to lose control of it and snap it onto the paint and scratch things up so there it is 
and yeah, that, <laughs> this pump is really going to be difficult. Okay, believe it or not, the pump is so bad inside the shaft, the rust and everything, that I wasn't able to clean out. Uh, it will not work anymore. Uh, it just will not travel up and down on the air stem. So uh, I can try to play with this uh, pump later on, but for now I just replaced it for, with another uh, similar, similar era pump that I came out of a 502 stove. Put the mantles on now, and then I can take it outside and put some fuel in it, and then we will get it lit. So, um, if you uh, don't remember how to put on mantles, you just tie a single knot around them and stick your finger down in to open them up a little bit. And you see the groove on the burner caps, that's where you tie your string around. So just like that. Pull it tight. Then do the second half of the knot. Okay. You always want to snip off these strings because during the heating process, they will curl around and, and poke a hole in your mantle, and you don't want that. If you've seen any white burns on a globe, that's what that's from, a hole in the mantle. Once you get it tied on, you always put the flat side towards the generator. So turn it like that. And then I'll do the other side. Okay, there they are. Now I'm just going to take a match and light them on fire. The way mantles are made, once you do this, uh, it leaves them with a ceramic shell. It's very fragile. Make sure you burn all of it. Okay, I'm going to let it cool and then I'm going to take it outside and uh, Put some fuel in it, and then we'll light it, see how it works. Be right back. What's wrong? Hmm. What's wrong? You want to see the lantern lit? <laughs> All right, sit down. Sit. Sit. Good boy. Stay. Okay, so we have a full of fuel, about half full. Um, you know, when you go to light a lantern, don't overpressurize it. You know, 20 to 30 pumps is, is fine, and if you have a full lantern, um, you want to use even less. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack the valve because I want to hear what's going on. Um, I want to hear a rush of noise coming out of the generator and then I want to hear it start spitting after about five to ten seconds. Okay, there's the air. and there's the spinning. So we have success. That means that um, fuel has made it all the way up to the tip of the generator and she is ready to light. So now what I'm going to do is just take a couple matches and I'm going to hold them on the generator. I'm just, once they're lit, I'm going to just set them right here because I want to get this generator hot. A lantern does not run off of gasoline and it doesn't run off kerosene. What it runs off of is fuel vapor. So I need to get the uh, fuel in here to vaporize as quickly as possible. If you don't do it right, you're going to have a lot of smoke. So uh, you can flood a lantern out very easily too. But I'm just going to get that hot. And because I've introduced fuel into the generator now, it, it is going to light before I even crack the valve. The, the mantles will start to go, and then I'll just crack the valve and, and let it warm up. Mm. 
There they go. You want to just let them burn until they are burning evenly. And then open the valve up all the way. And then you pressurize to get a little more brightness out of it. Okay, there she goes. Now I can put the globe on it. And the ventilator. And the ball nut. And there she is. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. Instructions on how to do this can be found at oldtowncoleman.com. And until next time, keep them burning.